Went all right? Yep, looks good. All right. So as you can see at the bottom, we got a couple different models. Thanks for coming again. Like I said, Tech Tuesday. This week is electronic paperless recorders. So why do we data record? You know, why do the customers need the data? Well, somebody said it was a requirement, either the FDA, EPA, any other outside agency. Somebody needs that data in order to verify what's going on in the process. You know, the operator needs to know what happened. There's got to be historical record just in case something goes wrong in the future. A record of the process, which is, you know, proof of process, making sure things are going OK, as well as process improvement. So, you know, companies can take that data and look back at it and you know, figure out where they can improve. What part of the process can we improve? Save some money, save some time. Also, for certification purposes as well. So some of the challenges of data recording are accurate and reliable data to improve process performance. So getting that accurate data all the time is, is a very, very tough challenge to overcome. And that's kind of what we're dealing with when we're looking at data recording here. You know, a good visualization of the process, easy to understand. Fast, easy data retrieval for review and reporting, documentation for regulatory compliance and secure data with secure access to prevent tampering you know if if your parts are going into an to an airplane say or going to a government contract you're going to want that data to to be secure you know you don't want to come back to them with with data that's been tampered with so secure data is definitely very important so paperless recorders how are we meeting those needs well paperless recorders offer process visual visualization with the screens secure reliable data storage and data replay, compliance to stringent requirements of the most approval agencies, which is ideal for thermal processing and pharmaceuticals, permanent archive records of process and configuration data. You know, and that's gonna provide the manufacturers with simple infrastructure to provide faster startups and lowest life cycle costs. So when you when you look at those two things right there, faster startups, lowest life cycle costs, that's only that those are only good things for uh, for the manufacturers there, you know, and it, and that comes with intuitive analysis tools and process visualization to help employees be more efficient and make good decisions. So if we look at the product overview, what Honeywell has to offer here. We start with the easy trend on the top left, and then we kind of move over toward the right side into the mini trend recorder, the multi trend recorder, and the DR graphic. And that bottom row there is some of the uh, software that can come with that, um, come with those recorders on the top. You have screen designer, you know, the mini multi DR graphic only. You have trend manager suite, which includes all of those things at the bottom there, as well as a database. So you're not just getting one product here, you're getting, you're getting an array of tools that you can use. So we got best in class paperless recording and display technology here with the trend view recorders. You know, like I said, starting out at the easy trend, that's the smallest model we have, 5.7 inch display. You can get three to 12 analog inputs. The resolution is gonna be pretty, pretty low at, at 320 to 240 as that is the smaller and the most cost cost efficient model. And then we can move into the mini trend that has a couple more analog inputs there. As you can see, the resolution is going to be better. That's going to be a good option for you if you want to save some space, but still need a, you know up to 16 inputs. You, that's a lot of inputs you can put in there and you can you can really record a lot of data just off that really small 5.7 inch display that's either coming out of the panel or mounted somewhere else. And we can move on to the multi-trend GR recorder as well as the DR graphic those both have a 12.1 inch display and that's going to be really nice to have on your panel because you can see those numbers or that chart from very very far away so operators won't have to get up and go to a certain panel and and check 12 different numbers or 12 you know 12 different inputs they're going to be able to just take a peek over there look at the numbers from a far distance away and continue on their job. So that's going to save a lot of time right there. You know, up to 48 analog inputs on the multi-trend. That's 
very useful, especially when you're dealing with a lot of a lot of inputs like a like a furnace. And the DR graphic is uh, also very nice with the circular chart here on the left. And some unique features. I won't read all of them, but I will give you some of the more important ones. Uh, the remote view and control is really nice because that way you can remote in from somewhere else and actually control what is going on. The fuzzy logging is also really nice as well. Being able to smooth those smooth those graphs out and make it easy to read, easy to understand. Um, and also, look at you got secure communications toward the bottom left there. Like like I mentioned earlier, you don't want any any tampering going on. So having secure communications is is very important there. And just to the right is password synchronization, and that's going to be very nice because, like I said, another step further with that with that secure communication going on. So we're going to start with an overview of the multi-trend recorder here. So the data recording, you got full function secure data recorder with analog capability for up to 48 channels. 48 is a lot, like I said earlier. That's going to be, that's going to serve you very well for a lot of these bigger processes that are going on. You know, you got full data display, a recorder, zoom in, zoom out, jump to capability. <laughs> That's a lot of uh, capabilities going on with the screen. So you can kind of, if you have a problem going on or you're noticing a trend that you want to investigate into, you can go up to the recorder and play around and move around with these capabilities and be able to see what is going on and find the data that you need. And speaking of the data that you need, adjustable chart speeds. You can have the chart go fast, you can have it go slow depending on your process. From one millimeter an hour to 6,000 millimeters an hour. And you can add user messages at the recorder with the mark on chart function. Now, this might be my favorite favorite function that comes with the multi multi trend recorders here, because as the as the chart moves from left or right or up or down through the screen, you can mark on the chart there and say, oh, that was an error on the on the operator's part, or oh, that was an error. We had a leak on uh, a valve. You know, you can mark it with you know with by the operator and uh and really just uh you know communicate with ease as you look back at this data what happened you know it's just kind of like writing writing a note on a paper recorder so they're easy to view data and trends you got a full color display configurable for bar graphs trend panel meters or combination like i said you can go sideways horizontal traces or the waterfall and you have your number of scales shown and you have your pen pointers, as you can see on the image down there. And you can also do a custom display. And going back to secure data recording, you got a full password system, 21 CFR part 11 compliant, it's data protected. And you get a large buffer size for maximum data storage at the recorder. And talking about networking, you got Ethernet and RS-485 with Modbus and OPC UADA. So you're going to be able to go from this recorder to a lot of other things securely. Flexibility to add options and upgrade. So these option cards are functions like math, events, totalization. You're going to be able to kind of plug and play with your multi-trend recorder here and get the exact capabilities that you need. Maybe you just buy the basic model at first, but you, you find out you, you want this other capability. You have the ability to do that with this. So moving on to the DR graphic overview. This is also the 12.1 inch color TFT display with the touch screen. And you're getting up to 16 analog inputs with this. The Ethernet network connectivity with OPC, UA, or DA is very nice because as you can see here, you're going to be able to transfer this data from one recorder out to your system. So instead of keeping those paper recorders that you always have, you can just send them right to the computer, which is really nice. You got USB ports on this one too. And you have multi-batch record recording capabilities. So if you have things going on, you know, all over the place in your in your process here, you got multi-batch recording to be able to keep up with that. Um, and then you got your standard user screen, circular, trans or bar. Um, I've seen most people use the circular with this model here. Um, and this is a NEMA 4 enclosure, IP65 enclosure here. It's got a CSA and UL approval. And it's really not that big either. 
look at it, it's only 5.46 inches deep. So this is going to be able to fit really anywhere, really anywhere you need it to. Um, it's got that 12.1 inch display. It's it's a lot of screen. You're going to be able to see it from far away, and it's not going to take up too much space where it's going to become an inconvenience. So now moving over to the to the mini trend overview. Very similar to the multi trend, except you're only getting four, six, eight, twelve, or sixteen channels um, with the mini trend mini trend recorder. This is a smaller screen here. But you're still going to be able to put up to 16 channels on that, which is which is very nice, you know. And it's got the same functions as the multi-trend, the zoom in, out, jump to capability. Um, so you can play around with this one as well. A little bit more difficult, like I said, because the screen is smaller. But if you're only measuring up to certain uh, up to a certain amount of inputs, this may be the model for you. Um, it's got the same capabilities with in terms of bar graphs, in terms of you know up to down or left to right horizontal traces, waterfall traces with the pen pointers, and you have your custom display capabilities, like I said, with the uh, with the multi-trend. Same networking capability there, and the same secure data recording that we've that we've talked about. And then going to the easy trend, this is for general purpose recording here. You got the 5.7 inch display, 12 easy to set up user screens, USB port, an optional SD card for data storage. So you can just pop that right on a USB, grab that data, and then transfer it to your computer or put it somewhere secure for future use. Um, you're gonna have three or six analog inputs there, six input expansion board if you do need it, and, and some advanced recording features um, that you can get with the easy trend. Recording is you got your standard Ethernet for the communications and networking. You can also have remote viewing and control capability with this. Um, and then the Modbus Master as, as well, which we will talk about soon. And data storage, you got a large onboard data buffer, a gigabyte or two gigabytes there. And like I said, you can just go pop that USB stick into it, grab that data off of there, and you're all set to go. So we will look when we look at the Trade Manager Pro Software Suite, which is the software that comes with that. As I mentioned earlier, we have our line of recorders. We also have the line of software that you can get with it. So the Trend, Trend Manager Pro Software Suite, there's a couple different, couple different options we're going to look at here. This is the Trend Viewer, the most basic option. And this you're going to be able to display your data here and print it as well. It's a free viewing software. You know, it's, it's going to be very basic, but you can see what is going on. You know, with your recorder. Next, we have tr the trend manager, which is for data analysis and archiving. So here you can archive, print, and export. You know, it provides full recorder configuration. Here you can import and you can import and graph data. You can print graph data. You have an event system. You have batch mode. You can archive the data, like I said. This is very useful for people who want to comb back through that data and figure out how to improve their process or comb back through that data and provide that to, to a third party uh, if, need, if needed. And we also have the trend server, which is real-time viewing and archiving. It's a fully network, it's fully network aware. You know, it's secure, multi-level, multi-user access to the data. So here you got your password protection. You can distribute recorder data. This is this is the software that this is kind of like the Cadillac out of the three, where you're going to be able to view your data real time and archive it. So here you can really take a take a step into what's going on in the process, watch it in real time, and see where the problems are happening if there are problems. Here's some more info about what I mentioned with the trend manager suite here. The trend viewer, obviously the most the most basic, the trend manager pro, kind of the second step up. And then the trend server pro, obviously, like I said, kind of like the Cadillac with a with a lot more features there. So the companion software for the Trend Manager Pro software suites. You have the IQ OQ 
protocol assembler. This is for process validation. You know, you can generate your IQ document, process validation, process qualification. Uh, moving forward, we have the TrendView OPC histori historian. And this is how you're going to collect your historical data from Trend Manager. This is how you're going to store that data. So if you do need it from a third party, this is where you go to grab it. And then we also have our batch report tool, which is enhanced batch reports. You can create batch reports. So if you're running different processes all day throughout the day, you're getting a little bit of this in the process, a little bit of that in the process, different batches all the time. This is what you're going to want to go with. You can create a secure PDF report. You know, it includes min and max alarms, event messages, batch descriptors, batch data. So really a combine, you can combine trend and data into a single report. That's very, very, very useful, especially if you're running this all day, if you're running batches all day. So what are we looking at at the end of the day? You know, electronic paperless recorders. It's an intuitive configuration menu structure. So this is the screen that you're going to be looking at um, when we're when we're talking about paperless recorders in the middle here. You know, it's touch screen. You got quick navigation here. The text and graphics prompts are clear. They're very clear. They're laid out in a very very um, aesthetic way where it's easy to follow. You know, it eliminates the need for finding a user man manual or configuration card. You can just step through and it speeds up and simplifies, simplifies the process. So an operator or an engineer that comes down to, to check out what's going on with the recorder, where are we getting an error here? It's going to be very easy for them to walk through and then come back out of that system and set it up just like how they found it. You know, it's it's it really simplifies the the process of taking a look into this data. So and it's got a built in help feature as well. So if you do get lost, you just go right into the help feature and you and you're all set to go. So talk about easy to read screens and I have mentioned that quite a few times now here. You have the 5.7 inch screens and the 12.1 inch screens and here's a quick cutout on the right side of what the screens are going to look like here and this has a left to right um, graph with the values on the right side. You can see the colors very clear, the direction very clear, the spacing is good. It's very easy to, to read these screens, and especially when you get up to a 12.1 inch screen, you're gonna be able to see that from very far away. So the selections for additional data viewing options, you have non-process screens to complement trend digital bar graph displays. So you have alarms, you have min-max, totals, counters, user variables, script timers, messages. There are a lot of things you can add to this, to this screen in order to make it the best for your process. Actionable screen selections through events, through events for better process viewing. You can automatically jump to an important screen and it includes new screens in viewing selections. So that automatically jump to important screen, that's gonna be useful if you have an issue going on and you need to figure it out quickly, boom, you can jump to the screen, figure out what's going on. You already have it set up, automatically jump there and you can figure out what's going on with the problem. That'll save you time, that'll save you money. Here's a quick view at the multiple screens of process and non-process data. So you have your charts and digitals on the top left. You have your eight digitals in, in the top middle there. You can choose between all of these, which will give you, you know, the best. It'll be the best for your process. If you want the digital displays, you may want to go with that. If you want the chart, you may want to go with that. If you don't like the horizontal chart, then go with the vertical chart. Or how about the bar chart? A lot of different options here to suit your needs, either your needs or the operator's needs. What's going to be the easiest for him? Maybe he has, you know, not the best vision. Maybe you're going to need the numbers a little bit bigger. You can do that here and go with the eight digital displays instead of the line graph, which may be harder to see. It's got the easiest setup and configuration. I, I mentioned earlier, there's the screen grabs on the right side. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It's got good spacing here. You got clear visual icons and menu driven prompts for ease of use. No manual needed. You have the help. You have the help um, option built into the recorder to answer all your questions. 
you know, the credit system, which I will talk about in a little bit, is probably my, my favorite system for, you, for your flexible selection of firmware options. The Trend Manager PC software provides for easy setup and management of configurations. Batch recording. We, we mentioned batch recording earlier. You can do concurrent batch and you have batch identification for faster analysis. So you can record data from up to six processes recorded concurrently. Independent control of reactions. You have your stop, start, pause, resume, or abort options in your batch process. And the pens are grouped for easy, easy batch analysis. Pens are unique for each group. So you're not gonna you're not gonna get confused. Pen one here, pen one over there. They're gonna be exact. They're gonna be they're gonna be separated and they're gonna be grouped for easy batch analysis. You know, and indicators can show the status of the batch. You know, while you're running. And then, like I said, the batch identification for faster analysis. Single batch start screens for quick starts. You, you're going to be able to start up very quickly with this paperless recorder here. The data, the data is recorded and analyzed by batch. Just as the pens are grouped by batch, the data is recorded and analyzed by batch as well. So at the end of the day, it's all about the data. Set recorder to store what you need. Maybe you're going to need a lot, a lot of data. Maybe you're not, but either way, you're going to want it secure and reliable. You know, data storage set by pen by pen analysis. Expandable inter internal data storage capacity. You got up to four gigabytes on the mini, multi, or DR graphic, and you have two gigabytes on the easy trend. And that's expandable, like I said. And you can adjust the allotted storage between data storage and display data for replay. You can use the removable data storage like the USB stick, USB memory key, or an SD card. The data storage here from, from our paperless recorders is going to be useful because those third parties are going to come back and they're going to want to see the data. You got to find the paperless recorder for you for your needs maybe you won't need a lot of data maybe you will but either way you're going to want it to have easy access like i said that usb or that sd card is going to give you easy access to that data i mentioned earlier security it prevents tampering the password system is very nice with the with the paperless recorders supports 50 users and provides for four levels of recorder protection here. So you have your password and your standard password in ESS, the extended system security, to comply to FDA and 21 CFR Part 11 electronic data and electronic signature guidelines. You know, you have an audit trail for recording and purpose for recording and tracking actions. And you have your password protection of Ethernet port. So these paperless recorders, if you're worried about people digging into your computer compared to a paper recorder. These paperless recorders are very, very secure here. Like I said, it supports up to 50 users and four levels of recorder protection. If you want somebody to have a certain level of protection, then you can give them that level of protection under their password. Four different levels is, is, is quite a lot here. And then also the physical security along with that. You know, you got the wire lock, wire seal, lock capability for the front door and the real rear panel wiring excuse me rear panel wiring and then internal recorder configuration lockout switch for added security as well so even though that you may be transitioning from paper to paperless you're not going to sacrifice in terms of security in fact i think you're going to improve on your security by getting a paperless recorder I mentioned earlier the credit system for firmware options. This may be my favorite, um, my favorite feature of the of the paperless recorders. The credit system is for added functionality options, and they're applied in a flexible manner. So if you only need whole maths and events, that's fine. That's all you need. If you want, if you find out later, hey, I want reports or I want batch now. Now we're running batches. You can add those on. 
new functions, configuration lockout, secure communication, SD memory. You know, you have a wide selection of firmware options. The math that you can you can do with this, you got a hundred characters of free form math. So so being able to go through and analyze this data and set this up originally and then not have to touch it for a long time is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of worry. And you have your remote viewing and control tool as well. So extended PC viewing and control of the recorder via Internet Explorer or Honeywell remote display tool. This is a very, very nice feature and being able to buy credits for this, for the remote viewing, if you want it, that's great. That way you don't have to go out into the plant to see what's going on with the recorder. You can see it from your PC through Internet Explorer or through Honeywell remote display tool. So I think at this point I'll be turning it over back to Jeff, who will talk more about the applications and industries. All right, great, Drew. Thank Thanks you very for listening. much. Yeah, pre appreciate it, Drew. Um, what we'll do is uh, go ahead, Drew, stop sharing yours, and then I'll uh, go ahead and share my uh, training section here. And we'll dive into some applications. Uh, let's see here. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into a couple of applications. These are applications that are uh, pretty typical out in the industrial plants. Uh, but these are applications where the recorders really shine. Um, we're going to be going over some applications which inver uh, include industrial heat treat ovens, furnaces, uh, environmental chambers, boilers, sterilizers, environmental monitoring systems, uh, automotive paint, paint spray booths, food processing, uh, power plant pressure and, and power monitoring. Um, all of these particular applications either one require the data recorder for a level of uh, quality control or uh, to meet certain stringent uh, process requirements or uh, environmental uh, type requirements like, like uh, the EPA or in the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. Um, there's a lot of different industries that re require data recording, and uh, it's a very, very important part of each one of those applications. The first, uh, the first slide that I'm going to go over here real quick is there, there's a lot of uh, applications uh, where you might have an existing control system uh, that, that in, uh, entails a Modbus master type of a communication network. Um, in these applications, it's very easy to add a paperless Honeywell recorder out into the plant and utilize the Modbus communications to share process variables, set points, uh, things of that nature with the recorder from the uh, master uh, control system. So um, what this does is it eliminates a lot of redundant wiring. For example, let's say you have a, a control thermocouple that's hooked up to your controller there on the left hand side and that controller has a Modbus master communication network, what you can then do is hook up the recorder with either an RS-45 or a TCP IP uh, type configuration and then have the controller share that process variable or temperature uh, to the recorder without running an, another thermocouple to the recorder itself. So this, this uh, reduces a lot of um, additional wiring, labor, um, when you're trying to troubleshoot a system, it also reduces a lot of the uh, troubleshooting time that you would have uh, when trying to figure out uh, if there was a thermocouple that had failed or if there was a sensor that had failed out in the field. Um, so this is, um, this is something that makes it pretty easy to, to implement the recorder in this fashion. Uh, there's a lot of customers that we do this type of setup for, uh, in particular the aerospace industry with vacuum furnaces. Uh, other heat treat facilities where um, they had to add uh, data recording at some point and they didn't want to run a bunch of extra sensor wires to the recorder. So this is uh, this is a pretty typical setup. You know, as Drew had mentioned uh, earlier in the uh, in the training, there's a there's a lot of different types of communication uh, setups that you can have with the recorder, but they all uh, really include a nice data secure uh, connection from the control system to the recorder by using 
uh, the Ethernet, Modbus TCP IP, or Modbus RS-45. The next, uh, the next slide here is uh, a presentation on uh, wireless technology. So over the years, uh, there has uh, been a need out in the industry for wireless sensors or wireless devices to be monitoring the process out in the plant and then conveying that data wirelessly back to a recording device uh, to be able to record that data. Typically, these applications are, are hard to reach applications or just from a, a labor standpoint, it's, it's uh, very costly to run you know, explosion proof conduit or conduit out to a tank farm. Um, so in those type of cases, when you're just monitoring a, a level or a temperature or a pressure out in the plant and you want to get that back to a, a centralized data recording system, the, uh, the PAPOS recorder has the communication protocol built into it that allows you to then go out and reach out to all those different uh, remote areas and gather that data and record it in a secure fashion. Um, like I said, we use these a lot in um, tank farms where they want to measure level of multiple tanks that might be out uh, you know, some distance away from the control room. Uh, also for uh, EPA monitoring, uh, you know, maybe you have a temperature on a stack somewhere that you want to grab that data so you can provide to the, the EPA. Uh, and there's a lot of different other applications out there, but uh, the wireless data infrastructure these days have come a long ways, and um, there is, a, uh, there is a, a very secure data path that the wireless technology offers uh, back to the recorder. Uh, the other one would be uh, application for flow monitoring. Uh, there's a lot of applications where customers need to monitor the effluent flow of wastewater or water that's uh, leaving the plant going to the municipality for, uh, uh, for cleaning up that process. And in most cases, these plants have to monitor the flow and they also have to totalize the flow along with monitoring any type of pH uh, uh, measurement that they're doing to the effluent flow before it goes out to the municipality. Uh, they have to provide this record to the uh, city or township or whoever it is that they're uh, that the water is going out to. And in most cases, um, if they don't provide that flow data or totalized data uh, along with pH, the a lot of the plants end up getting fined um, because uh, this is a this is a controlled application and they need to provide those records to the uh, city or township uh, based on what they're what they're sending out of their plant. Lab monitoring, uh, there, there's a lot of applications where uh, the recorders are used for monitoring lab ovens or lab environmental chambers. Uh, in most cases, you're monitoring relative humidity, temperature, uh, thermocouples, RTDs for temperature. Um, and sometimes you're actually um, sending out alarms. Drew had talked a little bit about remote viewing into the recorder. In some of these lab applications, they might have a, a, a scientist or, or some type of lab operator that's running a test, and they need to know at all times what that test is doing. So having the remote view and the uh, remote emailing on alarms allows that personnel to very quickly either abort the test that they were doing or, or make some corrective actions so that, um, uh, that they could keep running with the test. Uh, and a lot of these labs, I mean, uh, you can get into situations where, you know, maybe they're doing a, a test in a lab for, uh, you know, some medical research or something like that, where sometimes these tests run, you know, months and sometimes even years uh, to complete the test cycle. And uh, to have this uh, critical data shared from a remote standpoint or uh, alarm, email alarms, this is uh, a nice feature to have in those type of applications. Hey, Jeff. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but it may, it may just be my screen, but I'm not seeing the, the slides move. I'm not sure if anybody else is seeing the same thing as me. Oh, uh, okay. You're still on applications and industries for me. Oh, okay. All right. Let me, uh, let me go back here real quick.
How's that, Drew? That yeah, looks good. All right, perfect. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, continue. Go ahead. That's good. That's good. So the uh, and moving on here, the uh, the next application would be a a heat treating application. Um, in today's world, there's a lot of new requirements and um, things that are are needed in the uh, heat treat industry. For example, if there's a heat treater that's doing work uh, for the aerospace industry, you have AMS 2750. Uh, this is a requirement for password and accuracy compliance uh, for any heat treater that's uh, heat treating an aerospace part. And uh, in those applications, the paperless uh, recorders meet all those applicate all those requirements for AMS 2750. Um, in some cases where you have a heat treat oven that's more of a batch style heat treat instead of a continuous, uh, the batch reporting capability that uh, Drew had talked about earlier is, is uh, key for that type of application. Uh, as Drew had mentioned, it allows you to track that batch and quickly identify that batch with either a customer name, a batch number, a run number, uh, something would, uh, which would allow you to very quickly uh, bring up that data at a later time using that batch feature and it really minimizes a lot of uh, uh, a lot of searching because if you can just search on the batch number or, or customer name um, that allows you to bring up the data very quickly. As I mentioned earlier vacuum furnace monitoring uh, this is one that uh, we do quite a bit of in in this Midwest area, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, um, the <clears throat> these recorders are used pretty widely on vacuum furnaces to monitor the load thermocouples as well as the control thermocouples and uh, other process variable monitoring uh, outside of that vacuum furnace. Uh, most cases, these vacuum furnaces are used uh, in uh, compliance type applications where they need to meet the AMS 2750 uh, requirements and the recorder really does a nice job with that. Um, in the vacuum furnace uh, industry, most of these are all all batch type applications, so the batch recording is is pretty critical uh, to be used on these vacuum furnaces. The um, all these recorders have universal input, so um, why that is important is on a vacuum furnace or other applications where you might have a combination of thermocouples. And then maybe you have a 4 to 20 milliamp input or a 1 to 5 or a 0 to 5 volt input. Um, this allows you to monitor uh, transmitted data from a transmitter, like a vacuum gauge or a, a, a vacuum meter. And then uh, allows, you, allows you also to bring in direct thermocouple inputs into the recorder as well. Uh, the X-Series recorders, again, uh, records data based on batch identifiers, supports up to 16, or I'm sorry, six concurrent batches. Uh, what this is critical for is, for example, if you have six individual heat treat batch furnaces or six vacuum furnaces, you can have six independent batches of data start uh, started, stopped, um, put on hold at all independent um, uh, batches. So um, there are a lot of cases when that part enters the furnace, you'll start the batch. And then when the part leaves the furnace, you'll stop the batch. And at that time, there's a unique identifier with a user ID, a lot number, a batch description, and any additional comments that the operator might have on that batch. All of that information is stored and travels with that batch. So, um, like I said, you can have up to six individual batches running concurrently, all with unique batch names, user IDs, lot numbers, and such. Uh, each one of these uh, batches can also be identified using a barcode input on the USB port of the recorder. And um, when you retrieve this data, uh, this batch data, it's imported into the uh, Trend Manager software and when you go to pull up the trend screen of that particular batch, you'll actually call it up by either lot number, batch name, uh, user ID, or any one of those descriptors that uh, was recorded with the batch. And that's where it allows very easy uh, lo you know, locating that batch data. There's a lot of customers that you know, have a, 
a heat treat cycle that one of their customers like Boeing or something like that comes back to them two, three, four years later and asks for a particular uh, trend report to be pulled up and the customer can very quickly just go into their trend manager software, identify that, uh, that batch name or the batch number and pull it up within seconds rather than the old way of uh, having a, a paper chart stored somewhere in a filing cabinet where they have to rummage through different filing cabinets to find that data. And sometimes that could take weeks, days, you know, months to find that data. And a lot of times um, that might be too late. Uh, AMS 2750, uh, NADCAP. Uh, so a lot, of the, a lot of the customers in the aerospace industry um, that are involved in the heat treat applications, these are two uh, industry standards that is very critical that uh, um, they need to adhere to and the, and the PAPOS recorders meet all the requirements of both of these. So uh, when you get into an application that requires recording, um, especially PAPOS recording, um, just know that uh, the recorder can handle both of those requirements. Uh, besides the batch type of applications uh, for recording, the recorders can also uh, monitor a lot of data for uh, continuous type app applications. A lot of the continuous applications have belts or, or chain driven belts that uh, move the part through the process or through the furnace. Uh, the recorder does have the capability since it has a universal analog inputs to monitor the speed of the belt either through a pulse input board, a speed converter, analog inputs. Um, it can also count uh, how many uh, pieces of product have moved through the application uh, to give the uh, operator a lot more information than just a process variable con you know, consisting of temperature or flow or pressure or something like that. So you could really have a nice overview of the operation on the recorder showing the operator a lot more information than you would ever get on just a, a straight uh, paper recorder. The incinerator application is, is a very important one and many applications uh, in industrial plants where the process has uh, either VOCs from like a paint type application or they have some waste coming out of the uh, stack from the process, uh, byproduct of the process. They have, most customers have to have an incinerator that will incinerate those, those bad fumes or whatever it is coming out of the stack. So before um, the, the byproducts of the process come through the stack, it first goes, and goes through a, an incinerator uh, which burns off of those uh, you know, volatile organic compounds or, or whatever it might be coming out of the stack. Uh, most cases, the incinerator has to be up to like around 1800 degrees and um, the EPA actually has uh, monitoring. Uh, they want to monitor that uh, temperature to make sure that it's at 18, 1800 degrees when the plant is running. So. Every once in a while, the EPA will come through uh, these plants, a lot of times un unannounced, <laughs> and uh, they'll ask for that data, and it's up to the plant environmental manager or uh, uh, maintenance manager, whoever it is that has responsibility for that incinerator to show the EPA that uh, temperature and uh, show it on a trend graph. So there's a lot of calculations that are available, math algorithms that are available in the recorder. You can do CEM calculations for rolling average, um, block averages, event monitoring. Uh, you can totalize the uh, calculated runtime of the incinerator. Um, it's also critical on these incinerators that uh, you are able to have remote viewing and email and alarms uh, for the incinerator as well, because a lot of times there's not an operator that's standing at the incinerator 24 hours a day or, or through the entire operation uh, runtime. So when um, when the incinerator goes down, uh, it's very critical from a remote access point for somebody to be able to view in and see what's going on and make some corrective steps before uh, they get into a situation where they're dumping some raw uh, bad uh, compounds out through the stack 
into the air and then, and then causing some environmental hazards. Pharmaceutical, um, obviously this is a, the, a big regulatory compliance here. Uh, there is a 21 CFR Part 11 compliance that the recorder has with extended security and password. Um, this, is a, uh, this is an overlying compliance that all pharmaceuticals must meet and the paperless recorders do meet those needs with the extended security. Uh, there's also a protocol assembler uh, that uh, is a, a separate software package that you can purchase with the recorder uh, to help uh, the validation and compliance engineers at these pharmaceuticals uh, utilize and put in place these recorders. Um, this is a very economical software package. I've been told by some of the pharmaceutical engineers that uh, the protocol assembler for these recorders have saved them upwards of twenty to thirty thousand uh, dollars by using the Honeywell protocol assembler to meet uh, the, all the documentation requirements of the 21 CFR Part 11. So the recorder is, uh, has been used pretty widely out in the industry in, in many different pharmaceutical applications, um, but uh, just know that the, uh, the recorders do meet the 21 CFR Part 11 and uh, is able to be used in those applications. So in summary, uh, for today's training, I'm going to wrap up here. Um, really appreciate your time. The, uh, these recorders, like I said, um, are used in a, a wide variety of different uh, applications, a lot of different industries. Uh, but if your customer is concerned with um, pulling data off the process to either one, improve quality, uh, provide data to their customers, or, or from an operational standpoint, um, giving their operators another view into the process so they can make uh, good decisions, quick decisions based on what they're seeing with the process data. Uh, these recorders are, are something you should take a look at. So um, with that, um, I'll wrap up and uh, open it up for any questions that uh, any, many, anybody might have from the audience. All right. Well, appreciate everybody's time. Uh, Drew, thanks for uh, uh, helping out with the uh, training today. And I will go ahead and uh, post this on YouTube. Uh, please visit the Loy Instrument YouTube site and uh, catch any of the uh, Tech Tuesdays that we've recorded in the past or today's recording. And uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or if you have an application that we might be able to help you with. And with that, uh, we will hopefully see you next Tech Tuesday. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Jeff. Good job, Drew. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks.